a little bit more subtle next week then? <laughs> and you think that's why Chief is calling my name? Could we be? <laughs> yeah, and without the camera on. <laughs> yeah, Jeff had to leave. <laughs> well, he had said earlier that he was going to be back and forth. Yeah. So, yeah, we got this stuff. What's that? Close enough. Ready? Let's go ahead and call the meeting to order, please. Regular meeting of Washington, Missouri City Council, Monday, January 6, 2020, 7 p.m. Heidrich? Here. Holtmeyer? Aye. Obermark? Here. Patke? Pettit? Here. Scornia? Here. Sullenchup? Here. Wessels? Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will all the council members answer if they have or have not read the minutes of the council meeting dated <coughs> December 16, 2019? Heidrich? Aye. Holtmeyer? Aye. Obermark? Aye. Hatke? Pettit? Yes. Scornia? Yes. Sullentrap? Yes. Wessels? Yes. Having read the minutes, are there any comments or questions? Any corrections? If not, I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Hydridge, seconded by Solentrup, to approve the minutes from our last meeting dated December 16, 2019. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you approve the minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Approval and adjustment of agenda. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Hydridge, seconded by Pettit, to approve the agenda for this evening. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? By your vote, you approve the agenda. Thank you. Priority items. <coughs> POW MIA City Proposal, Terry Sullentrup. Terry Sullentrup is here this evening to uh, give us a presentation uh, regarding the POW MIA uh, designation of our community. So Terry, we'll, you can update us to where you are. I also want to thank all the veterans who are here this evening. I'm not quite sure our Pledge of Allegiance have ever, ever sounded so full and great and glorious and all those things. So thank you all for being here and helping us with our pledge tonight. Absolutely. Thank you, Mary Lucy. Uh, once again, Terry Sullentrup, and I'm here asking for your support with regard to the city becoming a POWMI city. I know that the proposal was put forth a couple of years ago to the council, so uh, I would like to move that along. I'll just read a little bit about uh, some of the things that have gone on during this time. Uh, it's my understanding that, like I said, the proposal was presented by the Korean War veterans about two years ago, two and a half years ago, something like that. And due to some changes and things that took place on the staff and things like that, things got slowed down here in the city. So. I approached Mayor Lucy, I guess it was about June or July last mm -hmm. year, asking if I could move it forward, and she was gracious enough to say, yes, go ahead. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh. Turn that off real quick. <laughs> Darn fire department. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, once again, uh, I, I moved forward on that, and I got the paperwork from her and started, started going to work and doing what I needed to do. Uh, part of my work in getting this done was to approach each one of the veteran service organizations here in Washington, that being the Korean War veterans, the American Legion, Post 218, and the VFW Post 2661. And it was a unanimous approval by each one of those to support this program and make sure that the city does uh, move forward on it. So I thank them for that as well. Uh, you received my letters of each one of those, and you know that, you, that they have proposed it, and they have uh, agreed to support the program. Back in 2014, the city council um, approved the city as a Purple Heart City, and the signs are posted at five locations coming into town. Each one of those are the major intersections or major thoroughways coming to town. It's my understanding that when the approval of is given by Jefferson Barracks, who will be the final say on this. The POWMI board will receive, will receive one sign, 
we will have to uh, purchase the additional signs to be placed in those locations at a fee of about $100. Also, I, I would propose that two more flags be, po be posted with the uh, city flags, and that being one as you approach the uh, intersection of 100 and International, that a POWMIA flag, flag be placed in that location as well as one here at the public service building, public safety building here as well. Um, with regard to the public safety building, the, uh, there should be some corrections made on that in my, in my feelings as far as the flag code goes. The flag represents, should, should always be posted to the right of the presenter, the presenter that being the public safety building. So the flag is out of place, the U.S. flag is out of place at this time. Either by elevating the pole or and placing the flag there, which would be the preference, or moving it to the right and putting the other two in line with that. Willing to work with you on getting that accomplished, whatever it, you may decide. Uh, as you know, Franklin County became a POWMIA county back in April, and it was announced at the um, <clears throat> Soldiers Memorial by the Secretary of State that the state of Missouri is also looking at becoming a, a POWMIA state. So the city getting in line with that would be perfect as far as I could see. With a vote of your support and proclamation from the city stating your intention, I'm asking you to join me and uh, make our city the prisoner of war missing in action city. Uh, I would also ask that someone from the city represent the city when I uh, make the proposal to the board, the uh, POWMIA board down at uh, Jefferson Barracks. Over the past several years, several, group, several, several service groups along with Mayor Lucian had gathered at Krogh Park on the third Friday in uh, September. That is National POWMIA Day. We have been recognizing them over the last couple of years and it's something that we should continue to do. We have, that I know of, five individuals that were part of the city of Washington at one time and uh, were held as prisoners of war, or at least associated with the city of Washington. Those individuals were from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. One of those remains still have not been returned home, and that is Russ Pinnell, Russell Pinnell. He served in Korea, so, uh, I think it would be a great tribute to him and his family, not just for the others that have served that were POWs, but also for someone that has not returned home yet. In closing, I'd like to say that the uh, POWMI flag is, and symbol represents, nation, represents our nation's concern and commitment to resolve as fully as possible the fates of all Americans. Still prisoners missing and unaccounted for, thus ending uncertainty for their families and our nation. So please, I ask that you support me, support the program, and move forward on having the city become a POWMIA city. I'd like to thank also my veteran, my fellow veterans for being here this evening and the support that they're giving me on this as well. And thanks to the council for, what you're, uh, for your consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Terry. Are there any questions uh, of Terry? Any comments? Glad to answer anything that you have. You want a letter from the council? I would like a proclamation, if possible, or a resolution. Got the resolution. Our next resolution. Our next item is a resolution okay. Okay. that we have. Um, okay. Does the POWMIA flag, uh, flag is that flown below our national flag? The, yes, it is. It's, it's that is below correct. that. Yes. Okay. It's actually the second flag in order before the state of Missouri, before any branch of service flags, anything like that. It's a national flag that's uh, flown, with, flown alongside of the United States flag. Okay. Terry, right. when would you uh, be going down to Jefferson Barracks? When would I, that happen? I will see uh, one of the board members Wednesday morning, and then I know that there's two more, two more individuals that are coming out that are part of the board that are coming for the Korean War veterans meeting this week. So uh, we'll see them, and then we'll get it scheduled. I, I'm, they, I, I've been in contact with them, and I can tell you that they, they are looking forward to having the city be part of uh, the PLWMI program. So I think it'll move along real well. Uh, as far as a, an official time, as far as when we will do it, I'm not certain when that will take place. I will keep this, the council posted on that. I'd be happy to ride down there with you. Thank you, Greg. As would I. Okay. 
Very good. Thank you. They're the museum several times, and I've been a contributor. It's a nice setup. Yeah. Very good. That'd be great. Thanks. Are there quite a few cities in the state of Missouri that are already? I don't know how many. I know that uh, there's O'Fallon, Wentzville. Uh, there's a number of others in yeah. town. I, I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you how many there are. I didn't look into how many of those there were. But uh, I thought it was interesting that the Secretary of State said that he would like to see the state of Missouri move forward on it. I thought that That's was good. very interesting as well. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Mayor's presentations, appointments, and reappointments. Mayor's resolution, POW MIA city support. Okay, guys, want to come up? <clears throat> to follow that presentation, we have a resolution to present. No, because this is. So if you guys want to kind of stand over here, if you can, that way I can kind of see you when I'm reading. <laughs> you can go up closer to you the can, council. They won't go that you. way, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, sure. Glad to have you all here. <laughs> all right. OK. Well, thank you all for being here this evening. I think this is a, a big step for us to, to uh, continue on this path to become a POW MIA city. Uh, I think it's very important that we continue to support our veterans and um, appreciate all that you have done and what you continue to do for our community. So I know you all are very active and that's very much appreciated. So we have a resolution from the city of Washington, Missouri, POW MIA city support. Whereas in the early 1970s, as American servicemen were held as prisoners of war, a symbol was created to note their sacrifice and absence, the silhouette of a man's face, a watchtower with a guard on patrol, and a strand of barbed wire. And whereas this symbol contains the pledge, you are not forgotten. And whereas, according to the Department of Defense, POW, MIA, accounting agency, there remain 2,639 warriors still unaccounted for from the conflict in Vietnam, 7,697 from the Korean War, 72,707 from World War II, and 126 remains unaccounted for from the Cold War. And whereas pursuant to an act of Congress with section 1082 of the 1998 Defense Authorization Act, the third Friday of September annually is designated as the National POW MIA Recognition Day and is one of the six days that federal law requires the POW MIA flag to be flown at all places designated by the U.S. Secretary of Defense. And whereas the city of Washington wishes to join in honoring those men and women of the armed forces who were and remain missing in action or prisoners of war. And whereas the city wishes to join in the nation's efforts to rededicate <coughs> efforts to bring our patriots home and to care for our military families awaiting word of their loved ones. Now therefore I, Sandy Lucy, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor and speaking on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby order this resolution be made part of the official records of the city of Washington and a copy hereof presented to Terry Sullentrup, Vietnam veteran, U.S. Army, 1970 through 1972, with, appreci with appreciation for the dedication and service of all the missing men and women from our armed, armed forces. Signed, Sandy Lucy Mayor and Mary Trentman, City Clerk. There you go. You're
<laughs> no. Just the <laughs> Like I said, I thank you very much for your support on this. I thank you for the resolution. We will move forward and we will see that it gets taken care of. Uh, Rocky Sickman talked again tonight about the 444 days that he spent as a prisoner of war. And the fact that we are still missing one from Washington speaks well for uh, the need for remembering our prisoners of war. Thank you. Thank you all for being here tonight, and it's pretty cool. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any? <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Good to see you. Mayor's resolution for Bill Miller. I didn't read. I didn't read it till today. I changed it. On here anyway. Yeah. So our next order of business is a resolution uh, in appreciation for all the work that Bill Miller Sr. has done for our community. Come forward. <laughs> okay. Um, Bill recently stepped down uh, as president of the uh, 353 Develop Redevelopment Corporation. He had held that post for quite a few years. He's only the second president of that group. The first was Elmer Heidman and, uh, and then you. So anyway, um, and I just want to say a few words from a personal standpoint. Uh, I've known you uh, since high school, I guess. I mean, I always knew you as Mr. Miller. Um, and uh, uh, I had the, the good fortune to work at the Missourian when I was in high school and when I was a student at East Central. And um, I know from those days that Bill has always been very committed to our community, uh, had an undying love of Washington, and always wanted what was best for Washington. And uh, I saw it then, um, I saw it beyond then, and I have certainly seen it in the last several years when I've been working with you with the 353. And I sometimes, when I reflect, wonder if you didn't help instill, instill in me the passion for Washington, because I was always around all that news down there. So I think you always had it. Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, all right, so anyway. So we have a resolution, City of Washington, Missouri, in appreciation for outstanding public service, Bill Miller Sr. Whereas economic development promotes the well-being and quality of life for the community by creating, retaining, and expanding jobs that facilitate growth, enhance wealth, and provide a stable tax base. And whereas the Washington 353 Redevelopment Corporation helps facilitate new and expanding industrial development projects. And whereas Bill Miller Sr.'s unwavering commitment and willingness to serve as president of the Washington 353 Redevelopment Corporation from December 2009 through November 2019 has made a substantial contribution to the betterment of the city of Washington as well as his continued efforts with the Washington Civic Industrial Corporation, the Washington Area Highway Transportation Commission, Mercy Hospital, and the Missourian. And whereas key developments during Bill's tenure as president of the Washington 353 Redevelopment Corporation include expansion of WEG, formerly CG Power System, and before that, Powell's, LMI, which was Valent Aerostructures, <coughs> Melton Machine and Control Company, Computech, Hodges Badge, Frikes Quality Meats, as well as having a substantial hand in the development of the Town and Country, Schultz, and Heidman Industrial Parks, the construction of the team track, 
and the redevelopment of downtown Washington. And whereas the city of Washington desires to recognize and express its sincerest gratitude to one such individual who has so unselfishly given of his time and efforts in service to the public with his many years of involvement and who has done so and who has done so with a caring heart and a thoughtful mind. And whereas Bill Miller Sr. has played a skillful role in the important work for the good of the growth and development of our community and is entitled to just recognition for these efforts. Now therefore I, Sandy Lucy, by the virtue of the authority vested in me and speaking on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby tender to Bill Miller Sr. this resolution extending our deep appreciation for his time-honored legacy of dedication, enthusiasm, and outstanding public service given to the Washington community and order this resolution be made a part of the official records of the City of Washington, Missouri and a copy thereof delivered to Bill Miller Sr. Signed, Sandy Lucy Mayor and Mary Trentman City Clerk. Here you go. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll do exactly that. I want to, uh, first of all, thank the city for this. Uh, I've only been a minor player uh, down through the years, going back to the 1950s and so on. In industrial development, we've had really some outstanding people that uh, did an awful lot for the city of Washington. Guys like Bob Vosbrink, Elmer Heidman, Bob Miller, and there were a number of other ones. And uh, they worked very hard in industrial development. Those were the days before we had an economic development director. And once we got that, it, things moved along better. But I can tell you this, without the support of the city of Washington, the city council, and the mayor, and we've had times when the mayor didn't always agree with us on different things, but the mayor and the city council has always supported industrial development. And for that, I, I thank you very much. Uh, we couldn't do it without the city's cooperation. And so I'm just a minor player in the thing and uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, you gave me this, but I accept this really on behalf of the other members of the different board that I've served on, uh, the economic development directors, uh, Dick Oldenburg, Darren, and now Sal. Uh, couldn't do it without them, I'll tell you that. And uh, we've been very fortunate and I think the city is looked upon as a leader in industrial development. If you, all you have to do is drive through our industrial parks and see what we have. One of the things that I think sometimes is overlooked by the taxing entities, we have built a tax base for them over the years, a terrific tax base. You have all done that because you've approved everything that we, we, we have done. And we couldn't have done it without the cooperation of the city and uh, members of the city council down through the years. So I say thank you to all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mayor's proclamation, special recognition to Bridget Kelch. So Bridget and I have been partners in crime with this downtown <laughs> business, and um, remember the night we were sitting right there? And we got in big trouble. And we got in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had a brilliant idea that went down in flames and smoke and everything <laughs> like that. And, uh, Gosh. Darren resurrected us. <laughs> How many people got up and just started yelling at this podium that night about us? <laughs> We're still here. It was a long <laughs> night. It was a long night. <laughs> it was a long night. We, heard, we were called a lot of things. So anyway, um, but Bridget, you've done a great job for downtown. Who would have thought that uh, you would have been here as long as you were? I mean, when, it, when you first arrived, I mean, you were right out of school and things like that, but you have that tremendous passion for Washington as well, and 
um, this is your home, and you wanted your home to be a good spot, and so you did a did a great job through the years. So, anyway, so we have a mayor's proclamation, city of Washington, Missouri, special recognition, Bridget Kelch. Whereas Bridget Kelch has served this community well for almost 20 years as executive director of Downtown Washington Inc. and the Historic Washington Foundation and has played a critical role in the development and success of the organizations and community. And whereas she has earned the affection of area business owners and residents who are proud to call her friend and her dedication to the best interest of the community has won the high regard of all her associates. And whereas Bridget's passion, energy, and commitment have been key in keeping the downtown area vibrant with the Farmer's Market Pavilion and apartments, establishing the post office CPU, creating and opening Godfrey's Cabin B&B, &B, founding member of Missouri Main Street Connection in 2004, getting Washington named one of the first five dream communities in 2006, a great American Main Street community in 2012, and one of five success stories in 2018 by the National Main Street Center. Advised and counseled hundreds of potential new businesses, became an expert on public programs at the city, state, and federal levels, and advised property owners on how to use them. And whereas she was instrumental in organizing events such as Sunset on the Riverfront, Chili Cook-Off, the Murder Mystery Dinner, the Post Office Stomp, Barbecue Bikes and Blues, Food Stock, Farm to Table, Halloween Family Fun Night, <laughs> Pumpkin Palooza, and the Downtown Christmas Tree. And whereas Bridget Kelch has been an influence for good in the growth and progress of our community and is entitled to just recognition for these efforts. Now therefore I, Sandy Lucy, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Washington, and on behalf of the entire city council, hereby take great pride and pleasure in paying tribute to Bridget Kelch and hereby tender to her this proclamation extending our deep appreciation for her service and our best wishes for continued success in all her future endeavors. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the seal of the city of Washington, Missouri, this sixth day of January, 2020. Signed, Sandy Lucy Mayor. Well, um, having to follow in amazing footsteps, um, which I can't, uh, of Bill Miller, it's an honor to be recognized tonight with the great people such as himself. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the city of Washington, and I've not gone anywhere. Oh, my gosh. It's been months that I'm still doing this. Um, uh, I am... Uh, not too far away. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself with the college um, and still able to help here and there with downtown uh, when they find something strange and they don't know what it is. Um, so um, thank you very much. I enjoyed my time working with all of you. Um, I have enjoyed the projects, um, the commissions, um, the city of Washington, um, the people and the organization itself and just the area hold a huge part of my heart. And I appreciate you recognizing my time with downtown. Thank you. Okay. Citizens' comments? Is there anyone here who would like to address the council on any item that is not on the agenda? Okay. Report of Department Heads, Downtown Washington, Inc. Annual Report. Okay, this evening we have uh, Tyler is here, Tyler King, and he's going to give us the year in review for uh, Downtown Washington. This is an annual uh, report that we receive. So. Correct. Yep. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, Danielle is passing out uh, just a 
information about our slideshow that I have here, and I think you guys can see it down here if I'm not mistaken too. So uh, again, my name is Tyler King. I've met most of you, but the, those of you that ha I haven't met, um, I replaced the last person that was just up here, Bridget Kelch. So, um, and also too, I wanted to point out, we have a very um, great showing of our board members tonight. So I wanna thank you guys for coming as well, for taking time out of your day. So thank you. <coughs> So the report that I'm um, showing here this evening is um, our review from October of 2018 to September of 2019. Um, typically, that's how it's been done in the past. Uh, I think, you know, Darren, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, moving forward, we might do it from January to December. Um, we can discuss that's that fine. at a later time, but whatever works for, you, for everybody. Works. So um, I'll kind of go through this briefly. I have 20 slides, so I'll try to make this as quick as possible. But basically, I'm just going to hit some stats that we have from the previous year. Um, over the course of 2017 to 2018, we uh, netted 30 new employees in our downtown district. So that's 30 new employees on top of what we had last year. Um, over $8 million was invested into uh, downtown Washington, including residential and commercial uh, properties, and that ranges all the way from uh, east to Market Street, west to High Street, um, north to Front Street, and south to Fifth Street. Um, we get this information from permits that we pull and uh, from personal observations that we make, phone calls that we make, and, and things like that. Um, there was over $500,000 invested in public improvements by the City of Washington in our downtown district, um, whether that be sidewalks, streets, uh, and parks. And we had close to 10,000 volunteer hours uh, valued at over $250,000 um, over the past year. Uh, all of our board members are all volunteers, uh, including all of our other volunteers that come on committees and, and, um, and such. And so all of the time that they, um, they had spent over the last year, that's what we had calculated. Um, we also had uh, multiple trainings throughout the year, and all of our board members and volunteers that do attend those trainings pay for that themselves. So we calculated that out to be a, a little over $11,000. Um, spent. Um, over the past year, we had over 85,000 attendees at our events, whether that be our art fair and wine fest, our fall festival, uh, chili cook-off, all the events that we have throughout the year. Um, and it's about 84 days of community events that we put on, uh, along with trainings that we hold um, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one I really like. Uh, it's a number that we calculated for the amount of money that we spend as an organization, over $360,000 from Downtown Washington, Inc. Uh, we want to spend our money in Washington as much as possibly uh, as we can, um, whether that be within the whole city limits of City of Washington um, or representatives that um, work for in, within the City of Washington. We spend money with them as well. This does not include any spending um, by our festival attendees, so that's very hard to calculate, but uh, this is a number that I think is fascinating um, that we spend as an organization within the, uh, the city limits. Uh, this number is a little inflated compared to last year. If you, if you remember the total last year, it was a lot less, but we had over $360,000 in grant money um, awarded to us over the past year. The biggest number coming from this is our neighborhood assistance program, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit um, longer in, our, in, the, in the presentation here. So the number might be a little higher than what you've probably seen in years past, but I will, I will talk about that a little bit here in a second. Um, a goal of ours each year is to increase residential opportunities. Um, you know, we seek out developers, um, private investors, um, any property owners within that would, you know, want to remodel or um, build something within the downtown district. And uh, one of our committees, we have a four-point approach that we follow through Missouri Main Street. We have four different organ um, committees that we use, and one of them is our economic vitality, or some of you may know as an economic restructuring committee. Uh, one of their main goals is to uh, pursue opportunities like this. So um, what we've done over the last years was we had 10 units completed, and, and currently there's um, approximately 18, I believe, that are uh, in construction or in the planning phase um, as of September. This number here you'll see on your sheet, uh, there's 42 businesses listed on the side of the, one of the papers that I um, I showed you guys, um, 30 of those projects are either completed or um, currently in the process of being completed. Um, you'll see, like I said, the list on the side of the paper there. 12 of those projects are um, projects that we're currently counseling on right now, whether that's you know somebody that has contacted us as an organization wanting to potentially open up a business or seeking out um, property. Uh, the slide that you see here, and I'm sorry it's kind of crunched up, but I just wanted to show you kind of the difference 
from um, all, all of these towns are the seven accredited programs that we have in the state of Missouri. And I wanted to show you the difference between the operating budget that we have uh, compared to other some municipalities um, and how they pale in comparison to what the city of Washington does provide to downtown Washington, Inc. towards our budget. Uh, again, we are very gracious and, and happy for you know, all of your support, um, but I did want to bring to your attention as well what other communities are providing for their towns. So something to think about for the future moving forward, um, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And so I spoke earlier um, about um, the grants that we were awarded over the past year. One of those was the Neighborhood Assistance Program. And it's a very fascinating program if you're not uh, familiar with it. Uh, basically, it, it's, it was uh, awarded to us to be able to provide uh, funds at a low interest loan, with a low interest loan program um, throughout the city of Washington for people to fix up their properties, whether it be a facade or windows, uh, roofing, things like that. Um, but the papers that I passed out will kind of explain a little bit more to you. I don't want to go too far into detail about that because I could talk forever on this. Um, but it explains the details about the loan that we do offer, the 1% low interest loan, um, the tax credits and such. And uh, I, I have a few pictures of before and after pictures and a, a few pictures of currently what's going on. Um, so again, I'm sorry it's kind of small here, but you can see the Marikai building. Um, that's the old Little Sicily building on 5th Street. Um, they were, um, they, they used the low interest loan that we offered and you can kind of see some of the differences that they've done. Um, you know, with their roofing and their painting and such. Uh, this is the Mraz building on Front Street that you all are pretty familiar with, I'm sure. Um, that's going to have a nano brewery, a real estate company, a yoga studio, and an office um, space down there. I took this picture the other day just to kind of show some of the progress that they, they've done. This is a 120 West Front Street, Brian Bogues building. It's a fabulous building. They updated their front balcony. Um, added some to their porch as well, some updates to their porch. Um, he has a, an amazing uh, bed and breakfast on his top floor. Uh, we had it on our holiday house tour just this past month, so if you were able to go on that, uh, you got to see how amazing that property is. This is the Missouri Meerschaum Cord Cob Pipe Factory down on Front Street. Uh, Phil with the Missouri Meerschaum came to us and, and wanted to be a part of this, and he was able to uh, get the whole roof replaced on their, on their building. Uh, this is uh, the old Nieberg and Vitt building that was bought by Riverscape LLC. Um, they are currently working on all kinds of different projects within the building. Again, this, this program is mainly used for the outside of the building. So again, the facade, the windows, and such. Uh, right now, they're working on a fountain in the front. If you've dri driven downtown, um, it looks pretty neat. That should be really nice when that's completed. Um, and they're also going to be updating their windows. Um, as you can see, the top left-hand corner there, they're the old 1940s blocks windows. Um, this spring, they should be doing some more uh, around the building with, with the funds that they have received. And finally, kind of the staple of this project, that uh, I'm sure you've all been aware of too, is the Jasper House, um, the Helfrich Holtz and Brandt LLC, uh, the lawyers down here on the corner. They, uh, they were one of our first ones that um, were able to use this grant. And obviously you can see the main difference, you know, it's, it's a huge difference and it's a beautiful building. So if, if you have not had a chance to go in there, uh, the guys will gladly let you walk through. Yeah, it looked better without that truck in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't pay any attention to the trash can on the left side of the building. I tried to cut that out, too. Boy, it, what a difference it made opening up all those windows. Exactly. It's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Um, for my last slide here and, and how you can help. So, again, like I said, we, we were able to obtain this grant um, of approximately $352,000. And in order for us to provide money to uh, people in the community that want to do these projects, we have currently six projects right now, uh, we have to sell tax credits. And with those tax credits, um, we're able to hold those funds and, and use that in a sense as a revolving line of credit for other potential projects that we have in the community. Uh, currently right now we've sold the majority of tax credits but we do have $59,000 left to sell in the tax credits. The nice part about this is it's a 70% tax break. Um, so you know where you're spending your money. You know, you spend your money in Washington. It's going back into the community. It's not going to Jefferson City or Columbia or wherever, you know, money gets distributed to. So um, if you want to find out more ways on how you can be a part of this, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. And, and, and again, talk to your CPAs too. They, they would know best on how it would be beneficial for your tax. Uh, again, thank you guys for having us here this evening. 
uh, we appreciate you know all the city does for downtown Washington. We love being a part of the city. Um, and again, thank you board members and, and volunteers for showing tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding Tyler's presentation? Keep up good work. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Okay. Could uh, I get? I um, guess we need to accept that into the minutes. Of I'll make the a motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Pettit, seconded by Holtmeyer, to accept this item into the minutes. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? By your vote, you accepted the item. Thank you. Any other department heads? Thank or you no? all for being here tonight. It's they good probably to see. want to stay for the next one. Yeah, you have one more thing here. <laughs> Ordinances and resolutions, an ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a contract buying between the city of Washington, Missouri and downtown Washington, Inc. Holtmeyer. Introduced by Council Member Holtmeyer. This is a, uh, a new contract for us with uh, downtown Washington, Inc., the past one. Um, I can't remember when, it, when uh, the past one terminated, but what is different with this, uh, I had a discussion with, with Bridget uh, before she left, and this was like sometime in 2019. I don't know when that was. But um, we, we had discussed about all of the, uh, the, the parks department, as, as the council is aware of, went through and revised all of their fee schedule for all the facilities, et cetera. And then Bridget came to me kind of sheepishly and said, what are we doing about downtown with all of our stuff that we, with, that we rent and lease, et cetera. So uh, I asked her to go ahead and kind of do some quick math. And uh, I met with Tyler about this too and discussed it with him um, about the fact that um, um, all of the facilities that they rent, uh, et cetera, throughout the year totals approximately about $10,000. Also, one of the things that you see, though, is like one of the things that was on uh, Tyler's slide uh, was the amount of volunteer hours that we have. And I can give you one thing that they give right back to uh, our park system is the volunteer day that we have in June or whatever, where they have fix it, paint up, clean up, whatever we call it for downtown, et cetera. I don't know the exact title. But um, anyway, uh, so that totals well over $5,000. And as you're aware of within our ordinance, any organization that commits $5,000 back to the city's park system, we give them to them for half the fees for, the, for any rental of the facilities. So I told uh, Bridget at the time, and I've since talked to Tyler about it, the idea was uh, we would increase the amount on their contract at least for this year or at this time so that that could reflect that we will go ahead and be invoicing them for, their, for the facilities that they use, keeping in uh, on the, I, I, also keeping in mind though that uh, we will also um, document or whatever will have their um, hours that they have for all of the volunteers that help uh, give back to our park system and just give back to our downtown in general. So this new contract, that's the main thing that you see, the change in it is just the dollar amount. It was previously 15000 We budgeted 20000 for it this year. And so um, we thought it'd be appropriate to go ahead and bring that up at this time tonight. And we've got the board members here. If you have any questions or Tyler can... Uh, you know, answer any questions if you have from them. Any questions or comments? Okay. An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a contract by and between the city of Washington, Missouri and downtown Washington, Inc. Heidrich? Aye. Skornia? Yes. Patkey? Holtmeyer? Aye. Pettit? Yes. Obermark? Aye. Sullentrop? Yes. Wessels? Aye. By your vote, you approve the ordinance. Thank you. And <laughs> an ordinance accepting. Thank you all for being here. An ordinance accepting the bid from Herb Equipment <clears throat> Company, Inc., Cuba, Missouri, and to approve the purchase of a 2020 John Deere 655K crawler loader and amend the 2019-2020 budget by the City of Washington, Missouri. Scornia. Introduced by Council Member Scornia. This is the item that Tony was talking about earlier. Yeah, so this is our high lift to replace our older one. We will be putting the newer one at the landfill as we spoke earlier. Uh, another thing I don't know if I mentioned, we had $160,000 budgeted for a new dozer, a smaller angle dozer this year. 
which was going to coincide with the uh, landfill closure. When that all changed, the need for the angle dozer for finished grading kind of fell to the wayside, and this was a bigger priority for us. So, okay. this may be a question for John, but uh, do we have any more cells available after this one's full? Uh, we do not. Okay. So we are currently um, evaluating with our uh, consultant engineer on uh, what year essentially five looks like, year 2025. Um, so we'll be coming forth with that in 2020 to you all with some options. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Mm -hmm. An ordinance you, accepting the bid from Herb Equipment Company, Inc., Cuba, Missouri, and to approve the purchase of a 2020 John Deere 655K crawler loader and amend the 2019-2020 budget by the City of Washington, Missouri. Scornia? Yes. Heidrich? Aye. Holtmeyer? Aye. Pettit? Yes. Obermark? Aye. Fellentrup? Yes. Wessels? Aye. By your vote, you approve the ordinance. Thank you. An ordinance accepting the bid from Washington Fence Company and to approve the purchase of Ameristar Wire Works Fencing by the City of Washington, Missouri. Hydrich. Introduced by Council Member Hydrich. This is the fence. For the dog park. Yes, this is the dog, dog park fence we talked about earlier for separating the large and small dogs. Um, will be, it is budgeted for. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is budgeted for, and we will be re, or we will be using some existing, uh, new existing panels that we have in stock already. So. Okay. <clears throat> any questions or comments? What do we know about this company? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to that. <laughs> we have previous work that was been completed by the company. <laughs> An ordinance accepting the bid from Washington Fence Company and to approve the purchase of Ameristar Wire Works Fencing by the City of Washington, Missouri. Heidrich? Aye. Scornia? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Pettit? Yes. Obermark? Aye. Sullentrup? Abstain. Wessels? Aye. By your vote, you approve the ordinance. Thank you. <coughs> An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a contract with SC Engineering LLC doing business as Cochrane for engineering design services for the Third Street Overlay and Improvement Project. Sullentrop. Introduced by Council Member Sullentrop. We discussed this at the earlier meeting and we are recommend, recommending moving forward with the contract. Any questions or comments? An ordinance authorizing and directing the execution of a contract with SC Engineering LLC doing business as Cochrane for engineering design services for the Third Street Overlay and Improvement Project. Heidrich? Aye. Scornia? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Pettit? Yes. Obermark? Aye. Sullentrop? Wessels? Aye. By your vote, you approve the ordinance. Thank you. Commission Committee and Board Reports. An ordinance approving the final plat of Stonecrest Plat 14, Phase 4, in the City of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Hydrich. Introduced by Council Member Hydrich. So this is a pretty simple final plat. This is actually the final phase of Plat 14. If you remember, this is the entire Plat 14. Um, and typically, when a developer gets a plat, a final plat recorded, uh, they have some options to either record it all at once with a performance measure or do it in phases and, and then uh, get it recorded as they put in um, improvements. And in this case, the developer did decide to do the latter. So that's why this has been separated. So what you're seeing, this gap right here where there's no road platted and no lots, that's the whole, that's the final plat of this that they're filling in. Again, this was the preliminary plat that we approved uh, about a year ago. And then this is the actual final plat that will be recorded just showing lots uh, 208 through 211. Um, again, there's no performance bond attached to this because we have done an inspection and the improvements are complete uh, to code. So pretty simple moving forward. Sal, how, how large are those? Um, they're between 7,400 and 11,000. Um, this portion of Stonecrest was R1D, got rezoned later uh, to allow for denser lots. So most of Stonecrest is the R1A, which is 10,000 square foot and below. These are 75, I'm sorry, 10,000 and above. These are 7,500 and above. Is Northcrest there yet? 
Yeah, yeah. so all these improvements are in. Um, I think there may be a cone blocking one of these intersections on, while it's under construction. The homes are under construction, but um, the public improvements are complete. Okay. There's a lot of traffic already on North Coast. Yeah. Getting access into Target and, and so. the park and everything else. So. That's a nice... Uh, it alleviates... Nice. A lot of traffic on... Uh, South nice, Point. Yeah, uh, it alleviates traffic on South Point Road. Well, sorry, which is a no. Well, we did, it's a nice um, loop. I mean, it's right. a nice another. I can't think of the word I'm trying to come up with, but it's good. And we do plan. Uh, we have in our, our master plan a connection further <laughs> west here for this to go over to Rabbit Trail eventually, mm -hmm. which would help obviously the Rabbit Trail yes. 100 intersection. Is is that part uh, to the west of this section? that's undeveloped right now is that is that also part of this last phase though no so it's owned by it's owned by kju uh these two lots are uh, it's technically three all the way west but they have not submitted a preliminary plat so if that were to come in it would be plat 15 it would be the next okay. phase all right. any other questions or comments an ordinance approving the final plat of Stonecrest, Plat 14, Phase 4, in the City of Washington, Franklin County, Missouri. Heydrich? Aye. Skornia? Yes. Holtmeyer? Aye. Pettit? Yes. Obermark? Aye. Sullinger? Yes. Wessels? Aye. By your vote, you approve the ordinance. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor's report? Uh, as shown on your agenda, our next council meeting will be held on Tuesday. January 21, uh, due to the Martin Luther King holiday on the 20th. So um, we'll be meeting on a Tuesday. Uh, the boards and commission party is coming up on January 17th. If you have not RSVP'd, I think the deadline is this uh, Wednesday, the 8th. Um, and we had a very enjoyable uh, employee appreciation party uh, last Friday night out at uh, the city park and uh, a little different theme this year, but it was certainly a, a fun night, and a lot of our uh, staff have ideas of what we could do different, uh, so the employees really enjoyed it, so it was nice. So thank you all for being there, those of you who were, and I think that's all I have. City Administrator's report? Just a couple of items, um, uh, stuff that's uh, gonna keep moving forward. I mean, we've got several projects uh, within the Parks Department. One of them, obviously, is the Aquatics Complex. We have a kickoff meeting with the owner's rep contract, uh, Cochran and Landmark, uh, that have teamed up to be our owner's rep for the project. We will be meeting with them this Friday. <coughs> Staff will be. Uh, so we'll let you know of future dates of when important milestones are coming up, et cetera. Uh, but the idea is to um, have a design build team picked by the spring, uh, early summer and then move forward with, con with the beginning of the construction, hopefully by uh, August the 1st or very close to that date. So um, the second item I'd bring up to your attention is that uh, we will have a discussion amongst other things at the public works meeting uh, coming up next Tuesday uh, about water rates. Um, staff has been studying these for a couple of months uh, we've gone back and forth as to uh, what type of, there's, there's several different um, rate structures you can follow, et cetera. We've taken a, a, a look at all of those, how they would affect um, all of our users uh, within the city, uh, but we're prepared to go ahead and start discussing that with the Public Works Board. But at some point, we'll probably have a workshop with the council uh, to discuss that. Um, and so I just want to put that on the horizon for you. More than likely, we'll have a workshop on that maybe next month. Um, so, as we keep moving forward, those are the only two items I have for you, unless you have any questions. Council comments? Any comments? No matters. Okay, entertain a motion to adjourn. We do not have an uh, we do executive not. motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion by Obermark, seconded by Pettit to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? By your vote, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.